In this video, we'll be taking a look at a new Linux distribution called Linux Lite. So what Linux Lite is, is like training wheels on a bike. It's something to get new users introduced to Linux in a very user-friendly way. So maybe if you're an experienced Linux user, this probably isn't going to be your first choice for a distro. But let's take a look at some of the enhancements they've done to this distro to make it a bit more user-friendly, say for Windows users who are thinking of coming across to Linux. So look at the application menu there. The, the programs are named by the function that they do, rather than the funny names that we have in Linux. So for example, the text editor there, well that's Leafpad text editor, but would a new user know that Leafpad would be a text editor? Not necessarily. And the other thing they've done is put on some features like this one here, so install updates. Well, it opens a terminal window, but it's a very much more user-friendly terminal, really, because we want to dispel the myth that everything is terminal and everything has to be all manual, manually done by the user. No, we've got a little intro here, so what, Linux Lite will now search for updates for your computer, and once installed it will be all up to date, but simply follow the on-screen instructions. And you can see there it says, please enter your password to continue. And that's the sudo, sudo or root password that you would have set up during the install of the system. So it goes ahead and just checks repositories and then does the updates. Well, I did the updates a few minutes ago and actually there weren't too many to do. But you can see it just gets on, does the job, doesn't ask you difficult questions. It makes it a lot easier and more user friendly than, say, many of the other distros that are available. Linux Lite is actually a combination of Zubuntu and Lubuntu, based on Ubuntu 12.04, so you've got long-term release support, so for five years. So you can see you've got the application menu on the left-hand side, you've got shortcuts to Firefox, home folder, terminal, you've got desktop switcher, so if you're a Windows user, this is something you wouldn't have seen before, we do have multiple desktops, so you can have one set of applications on one screen, and another set on the other screen, and you can just switch between the two. The other things we've got there are volume control, network manager, and calendar and time. Some of the other features on this distro that we've got a software installer. So this is another terminal window to install various little extras. So you can choose from a variety of things here. So let's just go with install instant messaging. And again, it tells you what it's going to do. It tells you it's going to install Pigeon, which is compatible with all those various types of messengers there. And just pop in root password. So here we go, all this new software. Do we want to continue? Yeah, sure, why not? And there you are, just gets on and does the job. And the other things that I've added are a few different tools useful if you're dual booting with Windows. So the NTFS configuration tool, which ah, this is not going to work because I've only got one drive on here. But what you could do if you had like Windows drive, you can set it to auto mount when the system boots up. So you can then move documents between the two systems then. You can see there are various other system tools included on this distro. Let's take a look at the actual programs now. So under accessories, just a few different accessories included on here. Nothing too complicated there. Under graphics, so we've got GIMP image editor and the Eye of Gnome image viewer. And that's GIMP 2.8, which defaults to the single windowed mode. So this is an alternative to Photoshop. The difference is it's free and included on the system. Anyway, under internet, we've got Firefox for your web browser, we've got Mumble voice chat, which I'm going to open that up now. So what this does is connects you directly to the Linux community chat server. So if you've got any questions, the folks here will be more than willing to help out. And even I pop in sometimes, mainly on the weekends and the evenings. The other things we've got, we've got Pigeon Internet Messenger, which I just installed then for that little script. We've got Thunderbird for your email client, Wicked Network Manager, so that's a wireless network manager, and we've got XChat for the IRC. And on Firefox, we can see we've got shortcuts to the help and support, which is a locally installed help file. And we've also got shortcuts to the Linux distro community. Under multimedia, so we've got a CD DVD burner, mixer, so that's a Pult Audio mixer and volume control, and we've got VLC for the media player. So VLC is like a very good all-round media player, playing pretty much any file that you throw at it. Under Office, we've got LibreOffice, and they've included the writer and spreadsheet for LibreOffice. We've also got a PDF viewer there. But LibreOffice will allow you to save and open Word documents. So as you can see, it's compatible with Microsoft Word right up to 2010. 
Last thing we'll just take a quick look at here is the task manager. You can see after using this system for a little while we can got very little CPU usage. Memory that is 10% of 2 gig of RAM that I've allocated for this virtual machine. So basically if your system can run the Windows XP or is even struggling to run Windows XP you can more than easily run Linux Lite. So here's what I thought of Linux Lite 1. So easy to use. It certainly is. They've done a lot of enhancements for making it more appealing for a new Linux user. Ease of installation, yeah, you've got the option in the installer to dual boot it with Windows or even make it a single operating system. But now at least with the dual booting you've got the option of switching back if you don't really get on with Linux. You've got the fallback for going with Windows. So it's styling. Mm, somewhat bland, but it's a lightweight system, but you can appreciate the rest of it for what it is. Boot up speed. Perhaps not the quickest Linux distro around, but it's certainly a lot quicker than booting up than say Windows 7 or even Windows 8, I would say. It's quicker than that. Uh, responsiveness. It's certainly quick and responsive. Number of bugs. Didn't find any. Selection of pre-installed applications. I reckon they hit it pretty well spot on for what they needed to accomplish with this distro. Uh, number of applications available. They've added a couple of extra repositories, but not enough really that I could mark it at 5 out of 5 here. Uh, 32 and 64 bit versions. Right, it does only come with the 32 bit. It's the physical address, it's a physical address extension kernel. So if you have more than 4 gig of RAM, the system will recognize it. But in some ways that's again easier for the new Linux user that not necessarily going to know what they mean, but with a 32 bit, it's going to run on the system. So yeah takes away that choice. So overall the good points that it's a very friendly system for new Linux users and it has a lot lighter system requirements than say Windows XP. So if your computer can run Windows XP or even if it's struggling to run Windows XP it will definitely run this distro. The bad points, well, I said there, it could have had better styling if it was based on GNOME or KDE. But is it going to make a difference really? No. The, the system works it just could look a bit fancier if they changed it to run on a different desktop. It doesn't have any bearing on the actual functionality of the system. So overall, I've rated it as 90%. So that's a very good score and definitely a distro to try out if you're interested in trying out Linux for the first time. But thanks for watching. See you later.